building and running your first Airflow Docker image. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use Docker to run Airflow by looking at the Docker file, build it, and instantiate a Docker container, which we're gonna manipulate by using the different commands we have seen. Let's go to the terminal. Make sure that you are connected to the VM and your Python virtual environment is activated as shown by the dot sandbox. First, we are going to download the repository containing the files needed for this section. Notice that this repository is a modified version for the course, which comes originally from the repository pickle slash docker dash airflow, which you can find in the Docker Hub. Once the download is finished, unzip the repository and let's see what we have in it. So we have a config folder containing the airflow configuration file which is going to be copied into the docker containers. Then we have the DAGs folder, but the docker containers will find our DAGs. We have three docker compose files to indicate to docker compose how our airflow application should start. As expected, we have the docker file specifying all the instructions to build our docker image. And finally, there is a script directory where you will find a script called each time a docker container with our image is launched. Now let's see actually what we have in the docker file. From python 3.6 specify that we are building our docker image from the base image python 3.6 since Airflow uses python. Next we have multiple arguments and environment variables set such as the version of Airflow we're gonna use, the home directory of Airflow and so on. The difference between arg and env is that args are only available during the build of a docker image whereas env values are available to containers during the build and the runtime. Then we have this big command which basically runs the instructions needed to make our docker image of Apache Airflow running correctly. This command runs updates, install libraries and Python packages such as Airflow, Redis and so on. Two copies are made from the VM to the docker container, one for the entry point script executed each time the container is launched and another copy for the Airflow configuration file. Finally, we make available the ports used by Airflow from the container to the VM and we run the command web server by default. Now you know what the docker file does, let's build our docker image containing Apache Airflow. As you can see by typing docker image ls, our VM doesn't have any docker image yet. Now to build the docker image, it's actually really simple. From the folder containing the docker file, type docker build dash dash rm to remove intermediate containers after a successful build, dash t airflow dash image to give a name to our docker image and a dot to specify that we want to build from the current directory. Enter and the build is running. Notice that this process can take some time to finish. So sit back and relax. Once it's done, if we list again the Docker images we have on the VM, we can see that Airflow image is now available. This means that we can actually instantiate it with Docker. To do this, type docker run d to detach the process, dash p 8083 to 8080 in order to bind the port of the container 8080 to the port 8083 of the VM, airflow dash image web server. Enter. And now, an instance of our Airflow image is running into a docker container, as shown by the command docker container ls. If you try to access to the Airflow UI from your web browser, you will see that the web server is running as expected. Back to our terminal, a very useful command that you can use to see the logs produced by your container is docker logs with its container ID. The last thing I want to show you is that you can actually run a bash shell to interact with your docker container. First, list the docker containers and by using the name of the Airflow image, type docker exec dash it, the name of the container, bash, enter, and now you are actually logged into your container. Leave the bash shell and stop the container by typing docker container stop and the container ID. Ok, so we have successfully built and executed our Airflow docker image, but we have only started the web server. Since Apache Airflow has multiple components to run, such as the scheduler and the metadatabase, let's discover how can we run everything at once in the next video.